Truth and the oil sands, that is the topic of tonight's byline. Bad ideas don't die. They just keep moving around, changing. They're resistant to the truth. Often, they're believed more than the truth. It's a bit like the old Mark Twain saying, a lie can run around the world six times while the truth is still trying to put on its pants. Which brings us to the ongoing myth of high cancer rates caused by the oil sands in Fort Chippewan, Alberta. Yesterday, another study of the issue found cancer rates are pretty much in line with what would be expected. 81 cases in the population between 1992 and 2011. The Provincial Health Authority says the projected number of cases for a community that size over that time period is 79. Wait a minute though, some of you are saying, wait a minute, some cancers that are they're at a higher rate than expected. What does that say? Well, it's true, there are higher rates of female lung cancer, cervical cancer, and biliary tract cancer, but let's break that down a little. Using provincial averages, the health officials said there should have been one case of cervical cancer. There were four. They're recommending pap smear testing be increased and other medical ways of detecting and dealing with this issue. Female lung cancer, according to the province, it, well, should have showed up four times in the 19-year period. There were eight cases. Their recommendation, better programs to help people quit smoking. Then there's the biliary or bile duct cancer. Officials said there should have been no episodes of this cancer, yet there were three. The American National Institute of Health lists a number of potential risk factors for this kind of cancer, including parasitic infection, gallstones, toxins, but also diabetes, obesity, alcohol, and smoking. Now, I shouldn't have to point this out, but considering that math is hard for many people and the hysteria about cancer in the oil sands will not stop, let me sum up well, some of the cancers are more prevalent with this observation. Yet yeah, some are more prevalent, but I could just as easily claim that it's due to the oil sands that others are less prevalent, that the oil sands have a beneficial health effect. Think about it. Overall, just two more cancer cases of all cancer types over a 19-year period. Yet, female lung cancer has four more cases than expected. Bile duct cancer has three extra cases. Cervical cancer, three extra cases. So 10 instances of more cancers than expected. That means a similar number of cancers are lower than would be expected. Is this due to the health benefits of the oil sands? That's just as valid a medical claim as saying other cancers are caused by the oil sands. Because here's what Alberta's chief medical officer, Dr. James Talbot, said at his news conference about the idea that this increase in some cancers are caused by environmental factors. So th there isn't much evidence for lung cancer uh, and for uh, cervical cancer to have an environmental cause at all. And as I said, the American Cancer Society lists 12 causes that are known with good evidence to be risk factors for bile duct cancer. Uh, none of those are chemicals that would be found in the environment. Uh, Talbot went on to say that Fort Chippewan is not unique in terms of cancer rates. I think the perception is that there's more cancer, and th to some extent, that perception is correct, but it's not unique to this community. 81 instead of 79, that's the out-of-control cancer rate. Will any of this new information stop the wild claims, including by senior U.S. politicians, that the oil sands are poisoning people? No, it won't. This is just the latest study. There have been others, including by the Royal Society of Canada, which reported in 2011 that, quote, there is currently no credible evidence of environmental contaminant exposures from oil sands reaching Fort Chippewan at levels expected to cause elevated human cancer rates. But Dr. James O'Connor, who started all of this with claims of significantly higher cancer rates, continues to bang his drum. He was featured in February in the U.S. Capitol flanking Senator Barbara Boxer, a California Democrat who's taken money from one of the main campaigners against Keystone XL Pipeline and the oil sands in general. I'm talking about Tom Steyer. The man promised to raise $100 million for the 2014 election cycle to support candidates that support his view of climate change. Steyer has already donated to Boxer in 2008, 2010, 2012. He'll likely donate to her again if she keeps giving profile to Dr. O'Connor in his false claims of sky-high cancer rates. Steyer made his billions as a banker, heavily invested in the oil industry. He's got his money and now he's become anti-oil after getting rich off the stuff. This is a guy who started his campaign against the Keystone XL pipeline while still holding a significant stake in the rival pipeline firm Kinder Morgan, which is seeking to double the Trans Mountain pipeline. Now, Steyer fancies himself a climate change activist now, but he still won't campaign against the Trans Mountain pipeline.
And why am I telling you all this in relation to claims of cancer in Alberta? Well, because as with so much of the opposition to Canadian resource development, you need to follow the money. Dr. O'Connor's claims have, well, they've been proven false on more than one occasion. But as the lies that are spread around the world six times while the truth gets its pants on, well, they know, just know that they're aided by a billionaire with a vested interest in stopping a specific pipeline. And he's willing to scare the public to do it. We all want clean water, we all want clean air, we want clean land to live on, and we want good health. But we should also want and demand the truth, the whole truth, with no agenda. And trust me, you won't get it from those trying to promote lies to help their own cause. And that's the byline. Tonight's top story is the Quebec election. Eric Duhame joins us now to talk about that. Eric, I uh, wanted Hi, to bring Brian. you in for a quick update on this because... We've talked about this before. I'm not a big fan of any of the political leaders or parties in Quebec, but at least from a Federalist separatist point of view, the Federalists, in terms of uh, Philip Couillard and the Liberals, are pulling ahead in the latest polls. Absolutely. The Leger poll in the journal this morning showed us that the Parti Québécois is now trailing by seven points. It's 40 percent for the Liberals, 33 percent uh, for the Parti Québécois. And the gap keeps increasing between the Liberals and the Parti Québécois. Just to remind the viewers uh, that when the election was called uh, less than, what, three weeks ago, the Parti Québécois was at 37 percent, so they went down by 4 percent. And uh, Philippe Couillard's Liberals went up by 5 percent from 35 to 40 percent. And uh, what we see currently, what happened over the weekend, and since that poll uh, was done, uh, the Parti Québécois is not doing any better. So we can expect the same trend to keep going and the gap to keep uh, increasing. And wow. that's terrible news for Pauline Marois' government. She's the one who called the election. She was leading. She was in a position of getting reelected. Uh, the polls were even suggesting that she was very close to a majority. And now it seems that it's the catastrophe. Uh, she will be not only in a minority territory again, but it's going to be the Liberals and not in a minority situation, but in a majority majority situation. All right, I want to ask you a, a couple more questions. One quickly. I, to me, it just seemed desperate that the PQ was claiming over the weekend that, oh, look at all these people from outside. They were mainly talking about English students at universities who live in Quebec now, but they're originally from outside the province. It was like, oh, look at these foreigners coming to steal our election. Yeah. They are legally allowed to vote there, are they not? Was this an act of desperation by the PQ? Well, it was an act of desperation at many levels. Uh, first off, uh, uh, Elections Quebec came out saying, look, uh, we're sorry, but we have less people that are registering right now than there was two years ago. So if there was a huge boom of people trying to steal the Quebec election, we didn't register that yet. Uh, the second thing is that students who've been here for several years, uh, the law is not crystal clear of what is their domicile. Like, if you live in Quebec, you pay taxes in Quebec, uh, you're, you, you're Quebecois, you can vote uh, during an election. It's just that uh, the election, Elections Quebec is saying if they have the intent to live and to go back home and their permanent address is still back home, then those voters should not be allowed to vote in Quebec. Uh, but it's very tricky and there's always ways to interpret the law. It's not crystal clear right now, but the PQ anyway made a, a storm where there was nothing. Uh, and even if there was, uh, believe it or not, but it's in constituencies that are very, very safe liberal seats. I looked at Westmount. That's where the majority of the McGill students live. And last time I saw, the only time that the liberals lost it since the beginning of Confederation was to the Equality Party in 1989 because it was not Federalist enough. So I don't think that the separatists are going to yeah. win there anytime no. soon. So it was a no, pure fabrication. No. They're not going to be stealing any seats up in Jean Pierre anytime soon. Uh, no. we got a minute left, Eric, and I wanted to ask you this. I opened the show talking about Alberta in the oil sands. Tell me, do I have reason to be optimistic that if Philip Couillard and the Liberals get in, that this is a leader that would be willing to look at developing Quebec's resources, the oil and the gas, and, and get Quebec off the dependence on the rest of the country? Don't hold your breath uh, too badly, Brian, because unfortunately, this is not the kind of discussion that we talk in Quebec during an election campaign. We love to talk about the referendum side. Uh, Philippe Couillard has been critical of the anti costi project by the Parti Québécois. Uh, many people are critical because the PQ is currently using, uh, you know, public money to, yeah. uh, to, 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 to develop that project, uh, and the Liberals are against it. So I don't believe that the Liberals in any way, form or shape will promote uh, the gas and oil oil industry in Quebec if they get elected on April 7th. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be part of their agenda right now. Uh, that's unfortunate because, uh, you know, Quebec does have the resources, could be self-sufficient, yeah. just like Ontario, and instead 
we're both on the dole and living off out west. Um, yeah. ma maybe this is the high life. Eric, good talking to you again. We'll chat oh. soon. Always a pleasure, Brian. Thank you.